I want to bring out our next guest uh, who has been waiting patiently. Uh, this guy is fantastically funny, but more than that, like he is somebody who uh, consistently does things that are surprising and fun. And I always like, uh, I well, we'll talk about what happened on Wednesday in a second. But uh, he is a comedian. He is an author. He is a stand-up. He is a podcaster. Uh, please welcome Chris Gethard. Gethard, what yeah. is up? Not much. I realized I should have cleared all that garbage off the bed behind me. Just as I <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. That's where that's where all the sleep happens. Right there. All those dreams. Is this your I guest bedroom? It. This is your guest bedroom stream. It room? is. It is. Yeah. I'm in that I, too. Uh, yeah, I bought a new house. We moved in like less than a year ago, so uh, there's still things and like that. And you moved out of the city and into New Jersey, right? Like that. Like yeah. you are. You went back to Jersey. Yeah, I was in Jackson Heights, Queens, um, which was the epicenter of the epicenter. If you remember the beginning of the yeah. pandemic, they, yeah, we're like reading the news, and it's like, oh, Elmhurst Hospital is the worst place in America for this. And I'm like, <laughs> that's two blocks from my house. We got to get the fuck out of here. Oh Luckily, we had already bought this house, so I fled back to New Jersey. Which you guys have known me long enough to know I've always had like a like a real devotion. Yeah. You are New Jersey. You are. I, re yeah. I remember. I remember. I mean, way, way back. Didn't you work for Weird New Jersey? That was one of the things at UCB that people were really fascinated because I looked like I was like twelve when I showed up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody was like, "Wait, you work at a magazine about haunted trees in New Jersey?" Like, yes. What the fuck well, is your deal, kid? And you yeah. took us on a you took us on a tour of of haunted places in New Jersey. Not just haunted, but like. I Weird right. places in New Jersey. Like that I the remember one for Ian's birthday. Yeah. yeah. And I remember going to like there was a place for like uh there's like a little village for circus performers that had tiny little houses. Yeah. And yeah. uh there was like a, a a street that had like a giant blood spattering. Annie's with... Road, yeah. Yeah. No matter was... how many time they times they pave it, her blood comes back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then I... you remember Clinton Road, the most haunted road in New Jersey, and there was a bunch of fucking bears that ran across the road in front of us. Yes, yes. I do remember. Yeah. Those were but, the days, man. That was when New Jersey was weird. That's when New Jersey was weird. Oh but, yeah, it's really cleaned yeah. up. It's acting. Yeah, it's cleaned up. Wait, man. but you, yeah. but you like, but that was like we did that for Ian's birthday party. But from my memory of it, you also were doing bus tours, like for normies too, like not not just for friends, right? That well, wasn't weird, New Jersey. That okay. that was kind of the first thing that got people to know who I was comedically because I feel like I look back and I'm like, I, I was able to keep up in like a very, very competitive environment that we came up in. But yeah. like, I wasn't, you know, I, I was still like on my way up and I had gotten a good reputation telling a lot of stories on stage. Like a lot of times doing the monologues at ASCAT and stuff, people were like, whoa, wait, like Gether has some strange stories. And yeah, a bunch of the kids from NYU who used to come to ASCAT they all started like showing up in like homemade t-shirts that would say like, let's get ready to rumble. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, it was really strange and it was like pretty tongue in cheek, but then they were like, but we do also really like you. And then one of them on Facebook was like, we want Gethard to show us all the places in New Jersey that he's talking about in these stories. And I was kind of offended. Cause I felt like I was like, it was kind. I was kind of this big joke of like, why would you like this guy <laughs> compared to all the other people in ASCAT? So I was like, all right, you little. But fuckers, you were like, one of them. Bus. Like you looked their age. I think. I think yeah. like, like sometimes you look at that ASCAT crew, and because it was primarily college students, that looked like yeah. an old crew. I mean, and like we were like we were the youngest, and that's like fifteen. 20 years ago like you know so it's like you look yeah. like you were one of them like they're like we want to be like let's let's do this let's find this bond yeah yeah and i took them to i took the um, in a bus all over new jersey and like the best part was we just went and knocked on the door of the house where i grew up and the guy let me bring like 60 people into the basement oh my god and i was just telling stories and i was just like oh yeah and then also like there used to be a couch on this spot. And in 1997, I lost my virginity on it. And the whole room went quiet. And the guy who owned the house from the back of the room just, come on, man. And I was just like, this is, this is everything I wanted it to be. So it's, it's kind of so how I got my reputation for doing like weird shit, you know? 
And that was sort of before, or like you, I doubt anyone was even filming that, you know, like you probably just did yeah. that to do it. It wasn't like, I'm going to make a pilot out of this and sell it as a thing. No. It's just like, this is weird and fun and no one else is doing this. And uh, yeah, it's so but, cool. Like, I mean, not to like, I think a lot of people obviously know who you are here, but there is such a, I'm thinking back to like me getting to know you. And it was that thing where it was like, Weird New Jersey, this, all of a sudden you're into like really uh, like MMA fighting. Like you were always doing something <laughs> that was, was like a jujitsu. There was like a jujitsu thing. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I got like six or seven. Oh, we lost him for a second. Oh, he'll come back in a second. He has a Planets Come Live is he knows how to have oh. a good. Oh, there you go. Oh, you froze you're back. for yeah. just oh. a second. You're, you're back. Oh, he's frozen. Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll get him back. Usually we'll I'm the one back. that freezes. Yeah. I mean, he's oh, normally. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, there now you you're back. You now you're back. You you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. Or is he not back? Oh, no. <laughs> this is. Do we want to. Do you want to. Do you want to uh, have him rejoin it? There you are. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> I think this might keep going on. Why don't you. <laughs> we'll see if this works. Why don't oh, yeah. you bail, bail and then rejoin? I'll restart my internet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, great. Yeah. We'll be back in a second. I, well, then while you're doing that, I'm going to tell them. I right, so a lot of, um, Gethard also had this show on uh, public access that then got picked up on TV. And how long I, was it on public access? Like in my memory, it was like on public access for a while. And it was in, for people that don't know, this was in New York and it was like pretty low fi at the beginning because it's pu public access, but it got so much momentum and became like this whole event every oh, week where he's back here. Tons it's, and tons of kids watching this live show. There you are. A hundred, Chris, Chris, is it true that you did 154 episodes of the Chris Gethard show on public access before you went and got picked up on TV? I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. God. We were there, I think four years on public access pretty much every week. And wow. it was just one of those things where I was like, I feel like everything I've ever done, I'm kind of like very proud of, but also mildly humiliated by. And it was like a really <laughs> good you, example of that. But you kind of created this vibe. It's, it's, I mean, I know we, we you know, there is an energy and there is a vibe in watching that show, but also being on that show that it just felt like this clubhouse. It felt like going to that basement with 60 people and telling people like where you lost your virginity and people are like willing to go with you in these places that can go dark and serious and insane. It's like that, that I've never seen anybody do that uh, in that way. Well, thanks for that. And yeah, it was a really special thing in my life. And like, I feel good that I knew it when it was happening of like, oh, this is fucking nuts. And I actually feel like, and I think I've mentioned this to you guys, like the thing I was most proud of is I feel like there's a few different things that have shown up on TV. Like when, when Pally hosted the Late Late Show yeah, and when you guys did the Human Giant Marathon, I oh feel gosh, like those so two things and my show, not to pat myself on the back, I'm like, that's the closest to what it felt like hanging out at UCB in 2003. A hundred percent. That's what I was always chasing and trying to like give to that next generation of people was that fucking feeling that you walk in and you're like, what is this energy? And it's like, just a movement. Any, yeah. And movement. anything can happen, you know, yeah. like, but people are so afraid of the lack of structure. Like I did this show on Fox with the lonely Island. It was called party over here. And the idea was, it was like, we built a theater within a old hotel and we tried to keep like a UCB kind of vibe and do like these live sketches and have them be loose. And the all the whole idea was like, hey, it's Fox. It's Saturday night. It's eleven o'clock at night or eleven thirty, whatever it was. And let's just go and make fun stuff and do stuff. And the amount of notes that we got and like at the end after we had shot everything, they're like nothing could be over ninety seconds. And like there's a want to not get that looseness out there. And what you did that that was so cool is like you had a live show that people could watch that was completely not unstructured but could go in different directions and then you'd have an edited version of it that would come on a little bit later yeah when we went to cable that was the deal of like we need to take phone calls that's like part of what you guys bought so yeah. there's got to be a live element and it was wild it's wild like you said like i always felt like because we wound up on two different cable networks 
of course it was weird. The first one was Fusion, which is not Fuse. They just unfortunately picked the name of uh, another small, like they were even God. smaller. But it was like a, a network that was aimed at English speaking Hispanic min- millennials. And then my show was <laughs> on it. It was so weird. And uh, Oh, wait, that they, was the same network that Paul F. Tompkins did the puppet show on, right? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. And it was just so weird. And then we went to True TV, which was, you know, that that was a big shot. And it was, it was this tough thing where it was like, we had all this critical praise and we had this reputation for being a wild show. But like, at the end of the day, cable, they don't want a wild show. Like, yeah. they right. don't want... They don't want a feral, like they want a dog. They don't want a feral animal that lives yeah. outside. And there's constant battling, as you can imagine. <laughs> and But it's it's also wild too, because the public access show was so beautiful. Because like, I worked really hard on it. But part of the point was like, let's let it fucking just fall apart and see what happens. And when it went to cable, a lot of the people were like, you sold out and it's not the same. But now everybody's favorite episode is the dumpster one, which people forget that wasn't public access. In a lot of people's right. minds, they're like, that was one of the public access ones. It's like, no, that was. And tell people tell okay. people what that was, because that, that was you and Manzoukas, right? Yeah. Was that the same? Yeah. One? yeah. So the first thing I'll say, which you guys will love, is after two years of fighting with this network, we literally begged them, like, can we just do one our way? Like, can we just do one without all these mandates? And it was that one, of course. And it was just, we had a dumpster and we told everybody, hey, there's a thing in the dumpster. Guess what's in the dumpster? If you guess in the first three minutes, we have no backup plan for what the rest of the episode will be. And if you don't guess, we will wheel it out of here and you will never know. And that was the premise. And I was so happy it was Paul and Jason because, like, I knew... um like especially jason just relentlessly fucks with me oh, every time we're doing so anything so hard yeah. yeah relentlessly and paul i feel like you're happy to kick open that door too <laughs> oh well, because it becomes like a thing like we got because like it's like you are <laughs> it's it's also like you like getting ganged up on and then it almost becomes it becomes like this can like this contagious moment of like that show went like from the minute it went live was like boom it just like flying off not well, flying off the rails but yeah Jethro, too though you have a special ability at being like the straight man to that and getting that abuse and like you know just like just taking it and taking it to like I, you know which is really funny to watch probably after a while is not that but fun for you again but. it was well it is so fun for me and it's like i was the kid brother at ucb for like 15 <laughs> yeah. 16 years like yeah like I'm like, like being the straight man to like, I was in a group with Bobby Moynihan and Zach Woods. Like, guess what? I am the straight man. Like <laughs> I'm doing ask cat with Horatio. Like, yeah, I'm going to get fucked with. Like, and so sometimes I get like a little bummed because I'll see people like people still talk about that episode so much. And then I'll see people be like, it was like, yeah, like, Paul and Jason were so funny on it. Like it wasn't really get there. And I'm like, but I was the one who built an environment <laughs> that, that allowed like, that. Like the yeah, only, I did but construct an environment and <laughs> invite the right people. Like I also did have something to do with it. We, uh, you know, but that's like, it's, it's that idea of like, I was talking about this the other day. Like when you nominate a movie for best picture, but don't nominate like it as best director, it's like, well, how can that be true? Like you're yeah. like, this is the best movie of the year, but the directing eh, that wasn't, that played no part in it. That played no part in the casting or anything like that. But like, I think for me, it's always like to have Jason eh, just be able to pop in at like any, any kind of moment and just right. Cause it's like, there's a, a built in history. You can't do that with like anybody. anybody. Yeah. yeah. You can't just have like Paul the Rudd. Who got yeah. my show the best. The weirdest thing, you two got the show obviously instantly. And the other guy who I always say just walked in and was like, got it? Method Man. Method Man yes. did the show oh, and was awesome. like, good, good to go. <laughs> yeah. I got this all figured out. But again, it's like, it's just that I, I have this distinct memory of, I think it was the third DCM was the first one I attended. And just in the middle of the night, sitting there, and there's some show that was just a clusterfuck going nowhere and wriggle walked out on stage with a baby doll and like i think like pretended to snort coke and then pre- yeah. like started seducing this baby doll. I was yeah like, yeah and i think i've just been my whole life like chasing that feeling yeah 
ever since. Like, I yeah. think I was like, just very, in my mind, I was like, Berbiglia once said to me, he's like, you know, like most of the people who came out of UCB, like they're actors or they're writers. And he's like, but you just like became known for being you. And he's like, that's really a <laughs> rare thing for the UCB crowd. I was like, yeah, I just kind of want to like, I don't know, like let shit fall apart publicly and see if I can land on my feet. Cause that's well, what it's, we did. It's that's so what exciting. We did. It's so exciting uh, to watch. It's just fun that. to watch because I don't people, want, people not... are so scared of it because it is really scary. Like when you, when you go to a show, especially in New York, like if you go to a live <laughs> theater in New York and it's like, what is happening here? Like it feels out of control. It's, it's funny. It's like, you're, you don't know where it's going to go. Like people anybody talk can, about that and people mm, want to see that. And they want to anyone see, like, can pop the, in or pop on and, and just like jump in at a moment's notice. Boom! Oh, that's what oh. talking about. No oh, more fun for me. Oh, oh, <laughs> no more fun for me. No more oh. compliment. These guys are saying such nice things to me. Such <laughs> nice things about Gethard? How, okay, then I'm glad. Then I'm glad. I was, I not, I was not aware that Manzukas was coming on. I did did not know this was happening. I got the text that said Gethard is on, get ready. And I was like, I was, I put clothes on, I put lights up, boom, I'm here when I'm called on. What are we talking about? <laughs> These guys were saying nice things about the Gethard show, but I wanted to say too, like I, I'm not good at taking praise, but I'm also like again, like Rick, like Hubel, there there was I used to go to Pile Driver all the time, and that's a show where you like got your fucking hand sliced apart by a tuna can and like yeah. See, like, I think Jason, if I remember it, like there was a cracked out show where the lights turned off halfway through. And I think it was me and you went and bought a bunch of Jesus candles from a bodega and just lit the candles and they didn't kick out the audience. There's no power. I'm like, that's just what we well, fucking did. Do you forever. remember? It like, felt meant- very much like that era of UCB felt like we were always putting on a show to the best of our abilities, yes. which were at that point. <laughs> not great yeah. mediocre at best i should also but mention, like I, such passion such fun like such drive to when do when we bought those candles i think you were also dressed as osama bin laden i, I, believe, I believe that might be that, that is possibly <laughs> that is possibly true by the way at that point there was a lot of osamas and there then was a the, lot the of police yeah. The police did show up yes, to a department. darkened theater um, while I was dressed as Osama bin Laden, which was not great. <laughs> yeah. But we and also. Like Gelman, Gelman rapping about like having sex with like an old fucking watermelon or some insane nonsense. But there were there were these like magical moments there too that were like not for audience where like there was a blackout in New York, like a famous blackout in New York. And for whatever uh, reason, the UCB theater was the only place that didn't lose power or like yeah. so they had air conditioning and it was fully the the theater worked the the gristidis above it the supermarket above it no power this yeah. was like we were on some weird grid that was like connected to new jersey like i don't know what i shit it, my pants that night what yeah <laughs> what I shit my pants yeah i was in the city i still lived in jersey back then and i had driven my car into the city and i was hanging out at the old um classroom space on 23rd street and everything and for, you know that horrible first half hour where we all thought it was another terrorist attack yeah and oh then, yeah i was in la at the time and was like oh no another terrorist attack has happened it was yeah. terrifying but then we all realized it was going to be like a fun party because everybody was out on the streets because no air conditioning so we had heard that the theater had air conditioning and i was walking around and i realized Every place in New York that served ice cream just started like giving it away because it was yeah. all melting. And sushi, so, sushi places too. Were just I, like, Come get it. I was walking around just eating free ice cream all day, like yeah. for hours. And then I went to the theater because, like a little oh, kid, like yeah. just you can't say no oh. because it's being offered to you. Which let's be clear, in 2003, I was I was 22, 23 years <laughs> yeah. old. Oh like, yeah, I still was just, just so confident in your in your um, ability to absorb dairy. Yes, <laughs> and then walking around in the August heat, and if you all the traffic lights were out too, so trying to drive a car out of the city was just like a complete clusterfuck. So. I hung out at the theater all night. But didn't I take your car? Didn't Shannon take your car? And we drove to my house in in someone's car to go get DVDs? We may have done that, yeah. Because I remember driving in someone's car. There's no lights in New York City. 
And then my building, I lived like on the 20th floor. And then we like all went up the stairs of my building to go get like a handful of DVDs that we could play. Because we had no DVDs, but we had access to a DVD player. And uh, and then, but I remember being in a car in a blacked out New York. And it was like police were there. And it was like we moved so slowly. But I just remember sitting in that car going down 23rd that Street. That sounds right. That I bu- sounds I, right. I, I, I bumped into Gelman and Daly in Union Square, and like I, somehow we all started wandering around together for a while. Went to someone's house to like drink or smoke or something, and uh, had like the most fun, like just like the uh, an epic night. And uh, I'm such an idiot. I was dating someone at the time, and at the end of the night, I went you know back to uh, her place. And she had been waiting for me the whole time. You know, you remember your cell phone, like no one can make a call. You couldn't get through to anyone. And I just assumed like, okay, well, I can't get through to her. She can't get through through me. I'm sure she's fine. I'm going to go out with my friends and have fun. Like just the worst, (laughs) the worst Worst boyfriend, the worst boyfriend. Such a great, I walked through Union Square too. And there was like a 200 person drum circle. And then I was walking to the theater and walking through Chelsea. I saw people sucking each other's dicks on the street. It was like the most fun fucking. There night. was it was a crazy night. Like people were hanging. It's the literally, best. people were. I, mean, I remember like going by McManus, which was a bar, and they were like hanging out the window, serving beers. Like people, it was like the city was off. Like everything was like, and there's no laws for until the power comes back on. There are no laws tonight. So I I, f- I feel like because people felt scared that it was another terrorist attack because it was so close to September 11th yeah that the relief that it wasn't allowed for everybody to be like we're gonna party uh, it was awesome yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so the middle God. of the night I finally get in my car because I know now I can make it through the Lincoln Tunnel it's not this like insanity and if you guys remember. I had like a real, I went to college with Katie Dippold and had like just a brutal crush on her. And the guy who dated her in college, who I was friends with, like this was all over with, he asked me if he could have a ride back to Jersey. I'd parked his car at a train station. Oh my God. We're driving in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden I just went from zero to diarrhea, like just instant (laughs) to the point where I was taking my hands and holding the steering wheel from below Mm -mm. and kind of like doing a pull up to push my asshole further into the seat. So I just stopped talking. And this guy I could tell was like, man, how is it still like, he doesn't say this, but I could feel he's like, how is it still so awkward between us? Like you had a crush on my girlfriend years ago. I'm like, I want to say like, no, it's not that. But I know if I start talking and unclench, I'm going to do diarrhea, drop him off, like manage to squeeze out a good vibe. Oh, you do? You you manage to drop Drop him him off? I have no Now here's the best part. He was at the train station in South Orange, New Jersey. At the time I lived in Montclair. To get there, you had to drive through my hometown of West Orange. So I'm like, great. I know every spot that's open in the middle of the night. I go to the diner. Oh, wait, idiot. Blackout. Everything's closed. So every place I drive by hoping has a fucking toilet. No, no dice. Make it back to my block in Montclair, New Jersey. Have not shit yet. There's a parking spot on my block, which was unheard of. Unheard of. Usually I had to park at this lot three blocks away. Right in front of my apartment building. Run up get in there, run up the stairs. I live on the second floor. Halfway up, I just feel, I just Uh, feel all this shit in the Well, because your body, your body knows it's almost there. Your body is like, we made it. Yeah. So I go run to my bathroom, finish up, go to look. Here's the really crazy part. I look in my pants and there's nothing there. And I'm like, I know I shit my pants. I walk back into the stairwell and balanced on the edge of a step was just this like giant nugget of shit. I was like, this is so oh. pathetic. I had to go. Wait, pick- it went through your pant leg? It rolled. Down. I had on baggy jeans. It was 2003. I was still, and I was a Jersey kid. I was still wearing like, boxers. Baggy jeans. <laughs> Load of boxers, shit. Dropping That's loads. a miracle. I mean, was that a is a miracle. It was kind of like performance art in a way, but I had to pick it up with a paper towel. I don't. 
It was I, so Gethard, I'm going to disagree with that. It was not performance. <laughs> it was like performance you, in many it ways. It was like, I think it was in many ways. Do you think Zero to Diarrhea will be the, the title of your next book? <laughs> Actually, Mar Maria Abramovich and I are going to try to replicate it at the Guggenheim when it reopens. <laughs> We're going to see if I can take a shit it's, and it's, it's, roll down the spiral it, perfectly nonstop. It's an art show called Whose Two Is This? <laughs> sure. What was the what was the thing that you and Gethard did this week, or did oh, we run past? That? No, this is Jason was there too. This is amazing. Yeah, like I I don't even know how to describe this. We were talking about like obviously. Oh, sorry, it's, it's, sorry, you and Gethard. Yeah, that's what no, I'm all about. of us, all three of us were involved oh, in this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Gethard, if you're not following uh, Planet Scum Live, it's another Twitch channel. It's great. That's where George Lucas talk show happens. Gethard has a show there, uh, multiple shows. And, and it's, it's a lot of the vibe of the Chris Gethard show is on Planet Scum Live. You do this show on Wednesday. I'm going to let you explain because I walked into it and I haven't stopped thinking about it since Wednesday. And I have so many feelings about it, but I feel like I've now really <laughs> landed on the side of like, I kind of am obsessed and love it now. Like I, I, I like, yeah. <laughs> and I thank you for saying that because I'm not being presumptuous. Like it's a weird thing. Like my show got canceled a few years ago and I used to be a guy who, I, when I would do stuff that was weird, generally it would get like some chatter. And now it's just, I'm like, it's not, I'm like a 40 year old dude now. <laughs> and I'm glad you liked it and you're, and thank you for plugging it. Cause I think it's really cool what's happened. So this is all true. Okay. Last year, pandemic hits, I start Planet Scum Live as an effort to just like have a platform. And I've always, between the Gethard show and some other stuff I've done, always try to like get younger comedians some some shine. Like again, UCB, that's what we all did for each other. Like you guys did it for me. I tried to do it for the people who started a few years after I did. Like that's what we did. Still love that feeling. So Monday nights is my friend Martin Urbano. Thursday nights, Robbie Hoffman. Sunday, George Lucas Talk Show. Tuesdays, Mary Houlihan. These great people. So anyway, it started with me doing a show. I couldn't think of any good ideas. I was feeling really bad. And I straight up was like, the dumpster everybody loves. Let me just rip that off to see if like it if it can keep the show going. So I put an the item in The dumpster being the episode of the Chris yeah. Gethard yeah. show. Oh, sorry. That may be, the, yeah. okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, it's okay. And if, which is which is on, if people have heard us talking, you guys talking about it, it's on YouTube. So if anybody wants to watch the, the dumpster episode of the Chris Gethard show, it's on YouTube. And the second episode, um, fuck it, show us your pets that Paul and I were also on, I believe is on HBO Max. It is it HBO is, Max. And, okay. and, and if you know the answer, don't spoil it in the chat. Just keep it. Let's don't yeah. don't don't yeah, yeah no don't clues. spoil it for yourself. It's much better. And you can see these two guys relentlessly fuck with me until a moment where they realize what's going on in the audience doesn't know. And you just watch them drop the bit of let's be mean together. And there's just a moment of like, oh, we really respect that you have pulled this off and then back to fucking with uh, me. And it's my, my favorite, favorite thing show. is the version that's on YouTube is edited, yeah. right? Um, to a, I'm going to say it's like a 40, probably 40 something minute, like to fit a, a, a network one hour right. uh, uh, format. But we shot that episode for, I think, over two hours. I think that's true. And, yeah. and largely so, because you would not stop talking. Correct. And that's what I was going to say. Largely because Paul and I completely commandeered control of the show and would not let you run your own show, which was making you so crazy, which is so funny so when you're watching it just know there's even more yeah yeah is, is there ever going to be a, a master cut of it or no i release I, release the zooks and sheer show, cut. It, show it on Love twitch it. just show it on twitch i don't know who has it maybe jd yeah. has it um but i bet we would be allowed to i don't even know if the fusion network still exists so yeah i, I feel like yeah it would be fun to see the full the full thing oh my gosh oh my god anyway so, sorry i yes. interrupted you it's go okay. ahead so i ripped that off and my whole thing was i'll put an item in the box you call up the twitch channel if you guess what's in the box i'll mail you what's in it and you get to keep the box that was it so then i started doing a thing where because the show the twitch channel we do like a pay what you can like as as if it was like a pass the hat comedy show and i was like look i don't want to make money off this i don't need to so the percentage I would normally take, like half of it goes to the staff who runs the channel. The percentage I would take goes in the box. You also win the money. So each week it would grow. So the first time we did it, it took them like a month or two to guess. I was like, I'm going to make it so much harder. And I said, a I month to or two to guess one item. Just, yeah, just, one yeah, just item. laying it down. Just yeah. call up, you watch. 
people start to guess. Are there clues? Or do you, you, you want to get there? Do you, do you want to give an example of what's an item that was like in that that, that has already been guessed? Well, I let's yeah. do the let's do the one on Wednesday. Like on Wednesday, one of the ones that was given, one of the clue, one of the things that was in the box was Chris had printed out labels, but his label maker had printed it out wrong. So he had the he had the, a, the name a myth- and address of a guy from Red Bank, New Jersey, was in the box. But that so you would really have hard. yeah. So you would have to guess the man's name. And oh, address. Wait. I mean, how in the world would well, anyone? And, but not just That's his address, but his incorrect address. No, his, it was incorrect. the wrong address. No, it was oh. printed uh, misshapen, like the. Oh, oh, was okay. Uh, the label was so, wrong, not the. First the first one okay. was easier. The first do you, one. Do you tell people like they're getting close? They're getting close. Well, initially we did that. Here's what. So the first one was a copy of Wizard magazine with the Hulk on the cover. That's what you had to guess. A girl won. The girl from Alabama, I think. So I said, I'll make the second one harder. Uh, I forget what that one was. And I said, I want this to last 17 months. We got to make it hard. So here's what happened. And this is legit. This is not me. This is not like pro wrestling me trying to live some fake story. This guy who has given like very generously to the shows on Planet Scum. He's been very kind and like kicks in money for all the shows. Clearly has some disposable income. God bless him. He sent me this really big donation and there was this note attached that was like, I'm giving you this money so you keep the box show going. The only caveat, make it really fucking hard this time. You said 17 (laughs) months. I want it to go 17 months. So I got in touch, wrote back to the email address. Don't know who this person is. I go, listen, if you're going to give this much money, like I respect it, but you have to like come along, be a part of it. I want you to be the executive producer. He's like, I never want to be on the show but yeah i'll like i basically gave him permission to just pull all the strings and be the puppet master so he made a website with a series of rules on it and then there was all these things if you kick in a certain amount of money it adds more to the box we came up with a whole board of directors there's like if you go to scum.guru there's now like 40 rules Many of the people who are on the board of directors do not know that their names and pictures are up there. Like I, I just, I just I, found out that I'm on the board of directors last this past week when I when you texted me randomly in the middle of the or the evening and said, "Hey, are you around? Click on the link and join this live stream." I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, Neither did I. I walked into, I walked wait, into this show. Wait, I didn't realize that that was your first time too, Jason. Yeah. Oh, I had zero clue. Paul, Zero. before I got joined, same, we spent the like same, 45 yeah. minutes explaining it to Jason, and then you came on and it spent like 45 more minutes still trying to explain what was happening. Oh, right. I was sitting on the couch reading comics, and I got a, a thing from Gethard that said, hey, are you around? I, I had to do a Zoom, and I cut, I cut it short, and I was like, I got to go. I got to do this thing. And then I jumped on with Gethard, and I was like, what are we, literally, what are we doing? So, and it's got it's spiraled completely out of control. There's now like 50 people on this board. Half of them are fans of the show who they have the Discord board, and then they send one representative and one. I like, brought on a co host, and she has her own box. Christy Cello, great comedian. And she's a pickle. She has her own box. No, no, no. The pickle is oh. not Christy. Oh, okay. Christy, Christy's wasn't there. She got her second shot on Wednesday. Oh, okay. so she it. was feeling sick. So, she has her own box. I don't know what's in her box. She doesn't know what's in my box. You have to guess every item to know what's in the box. You can, there's all the, the rules just keep changing. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try to like, cause I basically Rob, there are five boxes spread yeah. out across the country. And yes. in those five boxes, there are about 35 or 37 total items. Yeah. And what is the goal of the show is for someone to call in and guess all the items uh, in in the different boxes, up. and what happens is they all know that so I for want what? It to end. But then they they just get well, the Rob, stuff, here, or is there a ton of the money? Thing, Rob, here's the thing: is all these rules? It's like if you spend this much money, this happens. Like if you spend this much money, there's a. It's like if you spend one hundred sixty nine dollars, you can spin a random number generator, and whatever number it lands on, if that item has not been revealed yet it gets revealed and you have three chances. If you land on two that have already been revealed, you get three swings. So that money 
60% of it goes into the box. It's like you can spend $69, add a new item, or buy a $100 t-shirt, add a new item. There's all these different things you can do. $50 calls a board meeting. So at this point, we've been doing this third round of it since the night before Halloween. There's, I think, 41 items spread between five boxes. And if you guess all 41 items, you at this point will win over $3,000. So it's becoming kind of a big deal. But the items, the items, I will say, you have to guess the items perfectly. And I've seen Christy's list because the other night when Christy wasn't there, I was I was monitoring her list in case people guessed it. Her list is deeply specific things. So it's Mine. not just like, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, an iPhone case or this. It is like very descriptive and you have to guess every piece of these of, of what it is which I is i can tell you do you want me to crazy. tell you mine because i've had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen items in my box so far and one two three four five six seven eight nine have been guessed I, do you want to hear the ones that have yeah these are the ones that have been easy enough for them to guess since halloween this is how okay. deep this game is getting the first item that was in the box it was just the, before any others got added a, a coaster built for the size of a car cup holder with White Castle's logo on it. That was the first one. Then a the one that they guessed just this Wednesday, a, a, a splitter that turns a two-prong plug into a three-prong. Okay. Uh, the wrapper from a Smucker's Uncrustable PB&J sandwich. I couldn't believe they got the next two. The cap to a bottle of Bulldog root beer. I cannot believe they actually figured that one out. Here's the my question, though. Are they getting, yeah. are you giving clues to they how, whittle how it down. So they whittle it down like in, like just from talking to you on the so show? Do they? One of the rules the board established is you can tell a 45 second long story instead of doing guesses. Oh, this is like, and this is. <laughs> you listen to the 45 seconds and go, okay, like, like in that case, I'm like, okay, you know, you said, you said something about dogs and one of my things does have the name of a dog in the title. So now they're going, okay. So like a, then, like a story, Rob, story is like. And yeah, like a, a story kind of like allows you to do multiple guesses because you're certainly like. I was walking one night when I saw a red sign. A dog crossed the street, but my Pontiac was stopped on the side of the street. And when I looked up at the moon, it was a full moon, which illuminated a small basketball court. Like, so you, you try to like load it with as many details as you can, right? That's part of it. And, or, yes. And so like, and then if I said, yeah, one of them has a dog in it, then another person might call up that night or a subsequent night and go, so here's my story. One night I went to a dog park and I saw a dachshund, a chihuahua. I saw a Labrador. I saw a Labradoodle. And then they're just trying to figure out, can I, can we get him to say what type of dog it is? Um, so they eventually got to Bulldog Root Beer. The next one, I couldn't believe it was a soda cap because I collect sodas from a German cola called Afrikola which actually has like racist imagery on the bottle. I can't oh. believe they have a chain. It has the AfriCorps, the German regiment logo. On. I couldn't believe they got that. Um, one of those plastic child-proofing guards you put into a plug to stop a baby from putting his fingers in. By the way, and Gether, I can I just say one thing too? As people in the chat are, are I want to make sure. This is real. This is not a bit. This is not like the show is real. These are real items. These are real guesses. These are real people. Hundreds Absolutely. Of people. Yeah, okay. Yes, and, 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 and in most episodes, nothing gets guessed. Yeah, it's the, your night. Like it's deeply guessed. unsatisfying. As, as, do you as have, are, there, are there guests that come on and does, did Cheer and Zooks tell stories or is it just about what's in the box? Usually it's just about what's in the box. I'm very bad about asking for favors and, and uh, I, I, I get awkward about it. The, it's usually now it's me, Christy Cielo, and one night Christy couldn't make it. So I asked Will Hines to fill in. And we didn't realize like what happens because we alternate. Something gets added to my box, next Christy's box. I didn't realize if Will's on, he has to pick the next item. So all of a sudden he's got a box and now he's a permanent co host. And he's got a box. It's, it's the game. And, show and to be clear, of, to be clear, Will Hines is miserable. He hates. does not he does not well, want to be on the show anymore. And so his clues. It. His clues are very obvious because and, he wants the people to guess what's in his box so he can stop 
showing up for the show. And and, and 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 there is an element of it too. I didn't even get into the. We've mentioned the pickle before. The pickle. We should bring it up again. But oh, don't, pickle, don't you have yeah. to? Yeah, don't you have to keep your hand on the box for the entire that show? Was just, that was oh. only because someone paid. I think that one's like 180 bucks or something. Yeah, you, it's like it's one of the rules on the page. If you pay this much money, it becomes hands on a hard box. It was, yeah. And, and right. you know, you remember Mousetrap as a kid where the commercial made that game look so fun? Yeah. But then you play that game and 95% of it is setting up the fucking board. Yeah. yeah. It's it's the game show equivalent of that. It's, it's really frustrating. And we Hubo, also you got to go archive. on. Go, yeah, yeah. You can't watch it. Next week, who cares? I, I, the only thing I don't, (laughs) the only thing I don't want. Then do I have to come on every week after? Like, can I come on and then? Only will Jason. We figured out a way with Jason around that, where Jason's going to send his items to someone who will now safeguard his box, which you add. Oh, great! great, But someone who is inside of the show, so that they can monitor it. I would also suggest that there should be more money involved. Well, you have. You have to you have to come on the show on Wednesday and break it down. And then oh, I'm, we'll have, I'm gonna bring. Oh. No, here's how this works. If you have opinions on how it should work, okay. you come on, you air them. Yeah, we and we made up new rule. Fifty bucks. This is a cult. This is you know what it is? I, I'm it's an is open, board will decide. It's an open source show. It is. Yeah. It's an yeah. open source show. It's constantly being yeah. uh, recalibrated by the hosts and the audience. But as mo- it's happening i have we- to reiterate most importantly a guy who we refer to as the mysterious benefactor who i do not know his real name i have never seen his face he comes on the stream yard and we can you know like you guys can see the boxes yeah. with everybody below his is always just a graphic that he puts up i don't know if he if he walked past me on the street i would have no idea and it's all orchestrated by a literal stranger to me. And that's no joke. I don't know his name. There's no so and just to add that... one more wrinkle to the game to the show, there is also a woman who has who appears on screen for the show in a filter that is just a pickle with eyes and a mouth. And, called the and bigger how, bopper. How can, I'm how quickly can running to the people... bathroom for one second. Keep on talking. Yeah. How can new people uh how can a, a new person enjoy the show if someone tunes in the <laughs> show like, are they, they going to be like what the it's fuck? it's really hard the because also there's now months and months of clues and deduction and we yeah. don't archive it cuz i want it to be hard the but so the pickles deal is she's from canada i don't know what her real face looks like either cuz she only appears as a pickle but the reason i have her on is she from the very start started keeping meticulous notes of every call, every clue, every item. And she puts it up on the Discord. So she has a 56-page document archiving everything. So if you want to catch up with the show, you can read a 56-page document. And that, I think, is probably pretty exciting. Someone in the chat says that this is a torture (laughs) telethon. It's pretty wild, man. And I, I tell you what, like... Everybody knows that Will and I don't want to be doing it anymore. So what <laughs> happens invariably, and Jason, you saw this, is like they guess two items on Wednesday night, and then people immediately start buying new items and add six more. Like they're not going to ever let me escape from this Sisyphean hell of a show. Well, this is, but I will say this is in this is like a Chris Gethard special, like to create a to create a basically a trap for yourself where the audience, where the audience is empowered to impact your life negatively. (laughs) And so they do, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's, yeah, go ahead. Are people writing about this? Like this seems like someone should be writing an article. No one in the press cares. (laughs) It's, it's, I founded the planet scum network and it is not the most popular. Sh- the George Lucas talk show regularly smokes it viewers wise very often. So does the Monday and Thursday night show. I am arguably the fourth most popular show on my own network. And I'm trying to give away $3,000 and I'm it the is, fourth most popular show. It is why. So, and, 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 uh, and I will tell you, I did that show. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, was fuzz one of the items in Gethard's box? Cause he said it was another slang term for uh police i'm like i'm literally having like thoughts as the day is going on oh that's really funny yeah i will say sometimes yeah. i go on other shows and reveal clues so that the fans of that show get you should, you pissed off would you that. like wow. to hear Nothing clues dude because uh, i feel like here's the thing you seem miserable on the show like i, I feel I, like 
you've constructed a show that tortures you and yeah. your audience loves to contribute to that. Yes. And so as a result, you are now kind of, you, you're you now stuck in exactly some sort of like fable or or something like that. So like, do you want to give some clues now that help people who might we, tune in and we, Wednesday? And we, and we won't hype it. We won't, our, the, this show- well, there's a couple because I've been I've been clicking over to the Twitch stream. There's a few fans of the show who I see clicking in, and now they get the upper hand. I have this. We said that one of the items is synonymous with a slang term for cops. Yeah. So maybe what we can do is you each say a slang term for a cop. Okay. And I will say if I won't say which one but if one of the three you say Great. is one of the things Great. i'll narrow it down to three. and can i say that i guessed pig and that was not okay. it okay okay can i go yeah and paul you get a new one okay on top of pig yeah uh and are we just gonna get one guess that's it you each say one thing okay and then i'll say if it's that which either means you will narrow it down for the viewers or eliminate three things for them and it has to be a physical object. So it, be anyway, it, it, example, no, no. Right now, we're just looking spot. for a synonym for. Right now, we're just looking for a synonym for police. But it's a right. thing that fits in this box. Right. So, yeah. but in other words, if I say the heat, uh, there can't be heat in the box. So that's not a right. I don't know. Is that your? The word, but the word heat my could. The word heat could be in something in the box. Like it okay. could be a Miami Heat mini basketball or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, Okay, that's not my guess because I feel like you would have you physically would have reacted more if it was. Yeah, that. Listen, man, if there's one thing I'm known for, it's my fucking game. Okay, so mine yeah. is gonna be five zero. Oh fuck you, five zero. Mine okay. is gonna be five zero. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because I think there's possibly something that has the word fifty in it, or there's something that yeah. has there's yeah. a there's something that's a versatile. It's versatile to have those numbers. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure you, sure, you said pigs. Uh, I said pig. I said pig originally, and then I mentioned fuzz earlier, but no one bid on that, so I think I'm not going to say fuzz. So then I'm like, I'm wrestling between two terms, uh, and one seems like more of a private detective term. So I'm, I'm worried that that's going to that Gethard wouldn't say that's a synonymous for. I cop. did say a certain type of police officer. All right, then I'm going to say oh, dick. Okay. Oh, you're going to say oh, what? Dick. Dick. Okay. 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 Um, a certain type of police officer. Okay. I'm going to say she bear. That's a female. Cop. You wasted your guess. No, that's a female cop. Look it up. All right. She bear. Yeah. She bear. All right. So it, is there a she bear in the box? None of the three of you has correctly named. Wow. It. Damn it. Let now us go again. Huge. Let us go. Let us go again. One more. Damn round. it. One more round. One One more round. round. Is there a tactical whip in the box? Uh, chat. Let's see what chat is saying, too. I want to see what... I mean... This is... Sheer became the hero of the show because you very smartly slowed down the other night and you were like, how can I become the surrogate of these people and help guide it? <laughs> well, because yeah. they, they've done a lot of work and I will say that when I found out that there's a 56-page document... Oh, I got God, a good one, yeah. There's, right. some, there's some good, right. good stuff in the chat. Okay, we're going to do another round, right? All right. Oh, people are pissed at me because I said she bear? Fuck you. That's a real cop. Oh, um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> they are uh, turning on Hubes. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so to, to be clear, it's a type of a police officer, not yeah. a... Yeah, not okay. a slang okay. term for yeah. a pl okay i'm gonna I say that. i'm gonna, I'm say, gonna say this i'm gonna say this bobby which is a british cop yeah could be a bobby thing. Good. could be i feel like he would have said it was a different national like uh, like oh maybe hey man not. maybe not Look, okay all right. all right sorry sorry, sorry. Fucking, yeah, you know oh, you yeah, gotta yeah. come up with your yeah, own yeah. guess all right Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are saying. I want to talk to Jason. I want to talk to Jason for a second. I'm gonna say, all right, all yeah. Right. Go ahead, Paul. A lot. I'm seeing a lot of chips and chip in the in the oh, uh, in the yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't. Yeah. I don't think that, that is a. I don't think that, that is a. That's a, a common. Type of cop. Yeah. Is it all right? Cal but I mean, would you? Yeah. Highway Patrol. Yeah. yeah, I know. But would you think? I mean, that? somebody is saying it in the chat, which made me realize, like, is it possible? Gethard, that you have put something in the box that references your college nickname and it's Sheriff. Oh. Not a lot of people might know that 
Gethard for two years was known by the name Sheriff when you he was tell, in college. When you said that, I could tell I was reading Gethard's uh, facial. There was a small tick. There was a very small tick in his face. Right. Well, when you are that. known as a worldwide expert on micro expressions. I'm great. Gov yes. Governments oh. have actually flown you. Malcolm Gladwell there. studied you. <laughs> uh, all right. So I right, you gave that one. I'm gonna say the one. I'm I'm representing the chat here because I feel like the chat needs to be heard on this. And I don't know how it would be in there, but I'm gonna say gumshoe. Oh, so it could be a piece of gum. Could be yeah. We said yeah. gumshoe, Bobby, Bobby, and sheriff. And sheriff. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. No one has named. Wow. wow. Okay. All right. This is the way it works. Gathered the show is Wednesdays at what time? Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And I argue that it's actually really fun and intriguing. And unfortunately, it was a blast. No, it was a blast. The show's no a blast. Cares. No one cares. There's like oh. 150 <laughs> dedicated fans that really care. And I'm just. I well, now, now that you now that we've done it here, uh, that, it's going to be all all of these people are going to go to that. Yeah, 150 yeah. dedicated. I'd rather have 150 dedicated fans than these oh, fucking assholes that watch listen, our show. I'm be, I'm being grumpy, and I am I am eternally grateful for those people for sure. No, no, uh, by the way, but chat, it is, it's kind by of the weird, way, like, chat. Look, everybody's coming after me. Now. Isn't it no. a little weird that like vultures never brought up like, hey, this asshole's giving away three thousand yes, dollars because a I'm saying, nameless, yeah. faceless person is. Well, I don't think that. I, don't, I think a lot of media doesn't know Twitch. They just I, like people. They are, we the guests that we've had on this show. We we were doing crazy stuff over here we got a bunch of stuff but it is it's, it's i think people still don't understand what twitch is but that's okay yeah, yeah. uh so I, don't we talking under, about, I don't understand what twitch is we were talking I, about the bus YouTube. tour before and i forgot you were on that bus tour the ian's birthday bus yeah 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 it's on the bus tour the new jersey bus tour where we saw where uh, gethard lost his virginity <laughs> <laughs> wait you were in the one that actually went to inside his house oh yeah and then oh, it wow. ended, I don't know, forgive me if I'm t repeating whatever happened, but um, it, it, the, the tour was all sites that were significant in Gethard's life where he would then tell the story as to why this dorm room or this restaurant or whatever was significant to him, including the, the room in which he lost his virginity. But also um, it ended with a bus full of people pulling up to Gethard's parents' house and all getting out and going inside Gethard's parents' house had and hanging out. And my mom <laughs> said it was the UPS truck. And then like 60 people are in her living room. There was like 60. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's got to be like oh. a, a coach bus full of people. Also, this Jason, do you know the wrestler Bruiser Brody? I don't. Your pandemic look is approaching Bruiser Brody. Oh, okay. Is that good? I'll take it. Is he, he was, is he like a, uh, is he a, a, you know, a good guy or a bad guy? He was no, he was a bad guy, sort of loose cannon maniac who was legitimately stabbed. Sounds about death. right. He was stabbed oh, to no. death in a locker room in Puerto Rico by another wrestler. Oh, oh, God. Oh, no. um, guys, this has been absolutely Super fun, so dude. fun, so fun show. Jason, thank you for you. popping in. 